Good morning, HPMC. It's Reverend Chelsea Petticord here, and we are continuing our Advent study on Rooted. We are in one of my favorite passages today. Uh, if you have ever been around our youth ministry, you might have heard that I'm a pretty big nerd for the book of Exodus. I love the story of Moses. And here we pick up in kind of this giant turning point in Moses' story, in a really famous story in scripture. Here we see Moses in the burning bush, which a lot of people think was actually a tree. Let's read this scripture together, and we are going to check out something really, really, really incredible about who God is, how God relates to us, and what it looks like for us to relate to God. So in Exodus 3, I want to jump into verse 13. So Moses has just encountered this burning tree, and God is telling him, speaking through the tree, saying, hey, you are going to let my people um, be free. You are the one who's going to go out into Egypt and set the people free. It's you who's going to stand up to Pharaoh. And you can imagine that is a very daunting task. And so Moses is freaked out and he's talking to a burning tree. He's a little unaware of what exactly is going on. He's aware that this is a holy moment, that this is holy ground, but he's not exactly sure who he's talking to. So that's where we pick up in Exodus 3, verse 13. Then Moses said to God, If I come to the people of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, What's his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, Say this to the people of Israel. I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, say this to the people of Israel. The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, we're going through the family tree here, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and thus I am to be remembered throughout all the generations. Something you learn really early in ministry is names are important. You know the awkwardness of running into someone and it's, hey, you. Um, I often use as a youth pastor, like, hey girl, or what's up, dude, when I'm not fully sure of a name. But I found that once I know someone's name, especially someone who is surprised that I know their name, that relationship opens up. It goes a little deeper. Now, if you've been following us, the reading plan for several years now, or this is your first one, what I want you to know is that there are lots of different names for God. You know, you've maybe seen us study Genesis as a church and some of the other books of the Bible, where we talked a little bit about what these names are. And here we see God saying, I am. Now that's kind of confusing in our like English grammatical context, but what God is saying here is the name, Yahweh. It's a holy name. It's a sacred name. And the reason we translate this um, as I am, what God is trying to tell us is not only this is my name, our relationship is taking place. You are going to know who I am, what to call me, how to cry out to me. But I am. It's a showcase of just how powerful God is because God just is. Again, that's, that's wordy, and some of you are trying to maybe process the grammar because I get confused sometimes with trying to figure out this saying, I am, this expression. But what God is showing Moses, Moses is aware he's on holy ground, but I don't, I don't know that he's aware of what's taking place, of how holy this experience is of how big and grand and powerful God is. Because when God says, I am, God is saying, I just exist. God is saying that my existence doesn't depend on you or anything, but I just am. And the people are gonna know who I am now because I'm the God of Abraham, the God of Jacob, the God of Isaac, these people down your family tree, down these roots who have made you, I am the one who created them, 
who nurtured them, who made covenant with them. And now you are a part of this too. Moses, you know, responds throughout the story and he's quite frankly terrified to go to Egypt. And I think we would all agree that Moses' response is pretty normal and how we would respond. But what would it look like if this Advent season, you had that awe of seeing God as I am, this existence, this power that's not dependent on anything else. Because in our world, the things we depend on all depend on other things. Your job depends on certain things. Your family, we all depend on certain things. Your friends depend on certain things. But I am who God is, just is. And Moses knows this moment is special, but he maybe still isn't fully grasping how holy, how sacred this moment is as he encounters God. What moments are we all missing? Because maybe we don't have that complete awe of who God is. I, I think we have love of God. I, I think that might be a little bit easier sometimes to figure out. But what does it look like to be in awe of who God is, the power God has, and what God wants to do in your life? Because just like I am sends Moses to Egypt, an incredible task that is terrifying, that is daunting, God is still calling us to big tasks that are incredibly daunting and scary. To go out and alleviate oppression in the world. That's what Moses was called to do, and you and I are still called to do that. There's something God is calling you to do that may be your all thinks that's, that's too big. I know God can heal. I know God can do things. I know God can free people. I know God uh, is bigger than sin. I know that, but am I living that way where I have awe and wonder this Christmas um, you know, North Park Santa is, right? How many people are there at 6 a.m. right now trying to get a ticket so that their child will experience North Park Santa and have awe on the magic of Christmas? And you do it not maybe because you want a photo, honestly, but I also think you do it because you want your child to have that experience of magic and wonder and awe because you know those moments don't last forever. What if we have an awe and a wonder that lasts forever? Because I think as Moses starts to believe in this wonder, as his faith grows, that is what gives him the ability to go out by the power of God, free the people from the Egyptians, journey through the wilderness. And he has many highs and lows, that I can promise you. But God just needs us to be willing and to look at God and see that love and see that power and have awe for who our creator is.